without any shadow of a doubt. The biggest industry problem that we're having right now is a public who is confused about what a plastic surgeon is and who they are and how can they identify them. What I see all too often is patients who have gone along and had surgery which they believed was safe and only to find out that that surgery has been performed by someone who's actually not a surgeon but is simply a medical practitioner who may have done none or very little uh, plastic surgery training and therefore has not been able to one, offer the surgery that they require, two, perform that surgery safely and three, not able to follow up the patient and so we end up with a whole heap of complications such as wound infections and in some cases the patient's been had to go back to surgery to have liver lacerations repaired, have problems with the wound which has died, skin's died, tissue's died and have significant plastic surgical procedures to correct an operation that either wasn't performed well or was unnecessary or just was performed by someone who didn't know what they're doing. Well, the problem about patient testimonials is that there's no capacity then to legislate or control how true or accurate that testimonial is. And it opens up a whole variety of problems in that the patients can even more easily be misled. So if someone's got a, an opportunity to do a patient testimonial, you've got no idea if the patient's actually a true patient of that particular practitioner. You've got no opportunity to check whether what they're saying is accurate or true. And there's a huge opportunity for those people who are not playing by the rules, who are not doing the appropriate training, to further beguile and mislead a group of patients who do mostly of their research who do most of their research on the internet or social media. So it's a very, very big risk and we've got to make sure that patients, wherever they can, can see the training and the level of skill of the person who's about to operate on them. And the problem we have is at the moment, it's all too easy for surgeons who have inadequate training or medical practitioners who've got no training to mislead the public, to mislead those patients. And testimonials is just another way in which they can use that. So we need to be very careful about what we wish for if we open that up. That's a critical and very, very important question. The most important thing to do if you're thinking about having plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery is to do your research. Any surgery has risk. Any surgery has a very significant chance that things may go wrong in the wrong hands. And the best way you can minimise that risk, but not eliminate that risk, is to do your research and make sure that the person who is operating on you is actually a surgeon and has actually done surgical training. Now, how can you do that? You can look to the Australian Society of Plastic Surgeons website. There's a list of people who do that. Or even just more easily, look for the term F-R-A-C-S at the end of their name. You can only get those letters if you are actually a surgeon. So if the person does not have F-R-A-C-S at the end of their name, they're not a surgeon. That's a really important question. And the reason why it's important because that's the biggest stumbling block we have at the moment. A public who is not working in hospitals or doesn't work with doctors all the time, not unsurprisingly believes that someone who's they're a cosmetic surgeon has done training in cosmetic surgery and in many cases, particularly if you listen to what those people are saying, believe that they are better trained than a plastic surgeon. The difference between the two comes back to surgical training and also the way in which you approach a patient in terms of your ethics and your morals, and also how you monitor and look after that patient post-operatively. All too often what we see with cosmetic surgeons is that they are trained to perform a single operation and then they offer that operation irrespective of whether it's the correct or the right operation for a patient. And then if something goes wrong, they don't have the surgical skills to fix that complication. So they put the patient in a taxi and send them to the nearest emergency department where plastic surgeons are required to fix up the mess. And I see that every single week. So the, the biggest thing we've got to try and, I suppose, educate the public about is the difference between a cosmetic surgeon and a plastic surgeon the different levels of training and what a patient should expect and ask for before they're considering undergoing any sort of surgical procedure.